Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here. Today I want to chat with you guys a little bit about the five old school movements. Uh, these were done even by classic bodybuilders back in the day that if you only did these five exercises, it would build every muscle in your body. Now, when I make that statement, I do not mean that you will necessarily have perfect proportions. I don't mean that every muscle will be maximally developed that will probably take some additional refinement so i want to make that clear right up front when i say this i am not saying these are all you will ever need and i'm not saying this is going to build a perfect physique okay what i am saying is that these five classic movements which actually require minimal equipment okay, they require just the basics you know a basic rack basic bench barbell plates you know chin up belt they will build everything. Um, and these are movements that I, I obviously do, but I also have to do other stuff for my weak points, like my arms and stuff. But for someone who isn't uh, struggling with arms genetically, these may be close to enough. So let's let's talk about what these five movements are. Uh, the, the lower body, I think, is, is very straightforward and easy. Uh, so I'll actually discuss those first because they're about to come up through the footage because uh, I'm going to have these five movements showing through here. So, uh, the squat and the deadlift. And we have plenty of research on this. We have plenty of data. Uh, EMG studies, hypertrophy studies. We know that between these two movements, your entire lower body will grow. We also know they will help provide additional core stimulation, uh, lower back, potentially trapezius, some cases lat, um, all of those things but a classic barbell squat and a deadlift, okay? They will both stimulate very large amounts of muscle throughout the body with uh, definitely a bias towards the lower body. Uh, studies on the back squat, and people will say, well, that's really just for quads. Not necessarily. An actual squat in hypertrophy studies has actually been found to grow the glutes and the adductors at a slightly higher percentage than it does the quads, although it will absolutely grow the quads uh, and the deadlift will have secondary stimulus over to the quads. Um, its contribution to the hamstrings is very, very minimal. We only see very small amounts of muscle growth in the hamstrings from it, but everything else grows. The same when you start even looking at calves, look at some of the EMG data on calves, what do you find? Um, it lights them up. Now, there haven't been studies on the actual hypertrophy, and again, EMG doesn't always carry over to that, but we do know that uh, calves are worked at least decently, uh, based upon the data we have on, on the back squat. So again, the back squat itself, just because of the muscles involved, it being so good for the quads and glutes, will put more total muscle on you than any other lift you can do, because those are the two biggest muscles in the body. And they will grow significantly from it. And again, the data on that is very, very clear. Okay? Quads and glutes always grow in hypertrophy studies from the back squat. It is pushed with any degree of, of uh, intensity. All right, deadlifts. We've had only one hypertrophy study looking at the deadlift, and it was an absolute monster. Absolute monster uh, for just putting muscle on people. Glutes and hamstrings obviously will get the brunt of the growth, but the spinal erectors get a ton of stimulus. Some guys do get definite back growth traps and other things growing from it, forearms. Again, assuming you're doing all of it wrong. Uh, but yeah, the deadlift, way up there. And again, between those two, uh, because again, it hits the hamstrings as a primary mover, still hits the quads to some extent. Um, glutes, adductors, both of them will work the low back, the abdominals, all of those things. Uh, between those two exercises, your entire lower body will grow significantly. Will it necessarily be optimal? Not necessarily, but you will still see significant growth in every single muscle in the lower body up to and including the calves. Right from those two movements. And there will be some upper body growth, so there is, there is some carryover there. All right, for the upper body, uh, these three movements will do anything that you want. First up, the bench press. Uh, again, data on the bench press is extremely good. Uh, it tends to grow the delts, it grows the pecs. If performed correctly, uh, the pecs should get the majority of the growth. They will grow a ton from it. Anyone who says that they, they do not get pec growth from the bench press doesn't know how to perform the exercise. And in all the literature, the stimulus and the hypertrophy is phenomenal in the entire chest, upper and lower. 
it will grow the anterior delt significantly and it will grow the triceps with a focus on the uh, lateral head. The long head grows the least out of the tricep heads from the bench, at least in the studies, but you'll notice we have pullovers in there. Okay. But it will grow approximately half of the muscle tissue in the upper body. All right, then you have the chin up. Uh, again, chin up is actually a little more bicep dominant than in a lot of other pulls. It will, it will grow the lats significantly. It will grow the biceps and brachialis significantly. You'll actually see forearm growth from both of those. Um, but chin ups also work the, the trapezius. So particularly the lower and middle trap, whereas again, the deadlift will tend to help with the upper. Okay, all of that will grow from a chin up. Many people argue that they feel like it's the best bicep exercise. I disagree. I do think curls can be slightly better. I personally do curls. Um, I have to do curls, but a lot of people have developed quite good biceps off of uh, getting really strong at chin-ups. So they will absolutely grow your biceps, and, and there is no question about that. So uh, again, your arms will get worked pretty pretty significantly from all of that. All right, and then I have the pullover in there, um, which I feel like kind of finishes everything off. Uh, so you know, people will say, well, what, what, what does the pullover work? The pullover works almost everything. Um, it works the pectorals, it works the lats. Again, very, very good uh, research on that. Okay, works those things. It works the long head. A lot of people notice that the long head of their tricep gets significant growth, significant stimulus, significant DOMS, and it makes sense biomechanically when you look at it. Okay, so again, it complements the bench press very, very well. Uh, again, not telling anyone that they don't need extensions. I personally have to do extensions. But between those two exercises, you will get substantial tricep growth. You'll get substantial pectoral growth. All right, they also, it also tends to work the entire shoulder. It's great for shoulder mobility. So it does work the different heads of the delt. And I think that's kind of a point between those three exercises that your delts will actually get pretty significant stimulus and hypertrophy from these. Now, will some people, depending upon their goals, benefit from extra delt work? Of course. So again, when I make these statements of these exercises, I am not saying that these, these five movements will give you maximum muscle growth or perfect balanced muscle growth in every single muscle. What I'm saying is that between them, you will see significant measurable muscle growth in every single muscle in your entire body. These are classic lifts that were favored uh, tremendously uh, by old school classic bodybuilders before anabolics and PEDs became uh, the norm. Uh, they're time proven, they're effective, and between the five of them, you can build one heck of a base. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I'll talk to you guys next time.